Great is the Lord, and the Lord is greatly to be praised. I am sure that you are joining with me and giving God praise and thanks because He has been so good to us that all we can do is praise Him and thank Him and glorify Him for His goodness towards us. And just allowing us to live to see another day is a blessing. I call your attention to the song, It's Just Like His Great Love. The second stanza says, Sometimes when clouds of trouble blot out the sky above, I cannot see my Savior's face. I doubt His wondrous love. But He, from heaven's mercy seat, beholding my despair, and love removes the clouds between and show me he is there. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. What is that cloud that now have everything seems to be dark for you. What is that struggle that you're having right now that you do not see your way through? Well, if you are listening to this devotion, I want you to take a little while and listen because this word is for you. You may have to pay a little more attention to what I am saying today because this word is for you. I stopped last morning when I shared with you from 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, where I shared the ministry of Elisha was that of a pastor came for people, and his ministry gives us several accounts of the Lord performing miracles as we see that from. I read for you from 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. And in verse number 19, it says, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is north and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of water and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters, there shall not be from thence any more dirt or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the sayings of Elisha, which he spake. Now, the healing of the water at Jericho, and thereafter we see seven other miracles in his ministry from chapter 1, verse 1, all the way down to chapter 6, verse 7. Now, these miracles were done to assist the people in need. In our text that we read from the last morning, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, where we found this widow, here we find one of these miracles which we will look at today. Now, Elisha, the man of God, had before him a woman who was married to a man who was well known to Elisha, this man, her husband, served with Elisha. She was the wife of one of the sons of the prophets, our scripture tells us. Her husband was either one of these men in the school that Elijah taught, either as a student or he was a teacher of the same school. We will look at that in another devotion, but today we are looking at her husband had died and left her with some outstanding debts. Boy, sometimes when the breadwinner in the house is gone, the debts still remain there. Sometimes his going or her going brings with it more debt. So the debts are to be paid. And from this, we can see that she had no insurance, no life insurance on her husband. 
so that if he died, the debts would be paid. He died and he left her with some outstanding debts that she was unable to pay. And because of that, she was faced with her sons taken away from her and used as slaves to repay that debt. She had no one to taunt her. She may have already turned to all her friends, family, neighbors. I am sure that many knew of her death and no one could help her. So notice what she did. She turned to the man of God. Now this is very important. She will show you how important this is. I believe there is much we can learn from this as we take some time and look carefully and draw from it. She was not ashamed, the first thing I've noticed, to tell Elisha her needs. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. The creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bond men. The first thing I've noticed is that when she realized that she was in this struggle and she needed help, she cried to the man of God and she hid her pride. She put her pride aside to receive help. The question he asked required an answer and an honest answer. She explained her condition. This is the fourth step in receiving help from God and the man. She cried, but she cried to Elisha. Many today will tell you, I go directly to God and not to man. I believe that she too went to God, but God had her channel of blessing from him through a man, and this man was the man of God. Now, there is something I've noticed. She recognized this man, Elisha, as the man of God. She recognized him as God's man. If I go back to 2 Kings chapter 4 and read the seventh verse, you will see what she said there. In verse 7, the Bible said, Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay the debt, and live thou and thy children off the rest. Go sell the oil and pay the debt, and go live you and your children off the rest. She recognized this man, Elisha, as the man of God. I believe that that had a lot to do with her answer to prayer. She reminded him that her husband was his servant. Now, to be his servant, he would remember what he did as he served him or as they walked together as they serve together. My time is up for this morning. I must stop here and I'll pick up next morning with words from the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless your word to the hearts of your people. I love you. I thank you. I praise you. I glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.